Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Probability and Statistics Playlist. Um, so today I'll be going over the central limit theorem, uh, and this is, falls under the category of z-scores and the normal distribution, and this is part two. So if you haven't seen part one, and uh, you're not yet familiar with z-scores and or the normal distribution, uh, we strongly recommend you check that out first, uh, because this is going to build off of that. So the central limit theorem is pretty cool, and it's the reason why we can kind of apply statistics the way we do to the real world. Uh, and I've written down what it means right there. It says the sampling distribution of the mean by any independent random variable will be normal and or very near normal, given a sufficiently large sample size. And so what does that mean? Well, suppose you have a parent population, which I've uh, written up there. Um, it has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of uh, sigma. Um, if you take um, a sample from this, it, has, it would have to be fairly large, but we can also apply this for uh, not necessarily fairly large things, and it still is useful. Um, but if you took a fairly large sample size, um, you would see that uh, from the sampling population, uh, the mean will be very, very close uh, to normal, and you'll see that the sample population, um, if you take this mu of x, uh, the way I've said to do so right here, so if you took a lot of different samples and you took um, some mu and found of x bar, uh, that whole sample mean, you'll find that that should be very much trending towards the same mu as the pop parent population. And you will find that the standard deviation, um, sigma sub x bar, that's going to be sigma divided by the square root of n, where n is the size of your population, of your uh, sample size that you took from, from the population. Um, so that's um, kind of what we have. And from that, we can work with the z-scores that we talked about last time. Um, so if you recall, um, z-score was given by this. Uh, and I have put it in this form with x-bar, so because we're talking about a sample and not the, popu uh, not the population. But since we have, as given, um, the parent population mean and standard deviation, we can then turn this into um, something we can work with given parent population information and not necessarily sample population. And so this is what the z-score turns into when you're talking about a sample population instead of the parent population because you've taken samples from the parent population. Um, and so from there, if you recall, um, you're able to use a z-table or um, a calculator or something to use z-scores to calculate the probability of finding things um, within certain ranges. And that's really useful because um, now we can use the central limit theorem that says that um, it's going to trend normal or be very close to normal or absolutely just be normal if you have a really, really large sample size, I suppose. Um, and from there, we can use um, uh, the, these tools in order to solve problems. And I'm going to go into a real world example. Uh, Okay, so uh, for my real world example, since I used um, plants as an example before, I guess I'll use it again. Uh, say there's a plant company, um, and they say that if you have a tree, um, it will grow to a certain height after one year. And say after one year, they have calculated the average of um, their plants tend to have t grown about three feet uh, as an average with a standard deviation of uh, 0 0.1 feet. So say you bought your own plant and you want to know how likely it is that after one year of growth, just like um, the population, uh, that you will have a plant that is less than 2.9 feet. Um, so you can actually figure that out using the central li limit theorem, z-scores, and the normal distribution because of what we talked about before. So um, I'll write that down. So you want to know the probability of finding uh, your x, your one plant, less than 2.9 feet. Um, and since it's only one plant, we're going to say n is equal to 1. Uh, where you're going to turn this into a z-score, and that's basically how you're going to use it. Uh, so I'm doing algebra, just simple algebra here, where you kind of do the same thing to both sides. I've subtracted the mean. I've divided by uh, sigma divided by n, uh, square root of n. Uh, I'm going to plug in what we knew so far. So um, we have the population mean is 3 feet. Uh, we got that from a given in the problem. We have our sample size is 1, because we're only looking at one plant, just yours. Uh, we have sigma is 0 0.1. And these are all numbers that we can kind of plug in and calculate. This is just the z-score. So now what this is going to turn into is this. Uh, 
is just probability of z less than negative 1. Because we've kind of plugged this in and we've used the definition of z in order to turn this into that. Um, and that's kind of all you need. You can just calcul you can, um, calculate it or you could look at a z table to find that the probability of z score being less than negative 1. Uh, this is just equal to 15.87%, uh, 0.1587. Uh, so that's your probability of having this plant that is less than 2.9 feet after a year of growth. And that's just one of many, many, many applications to the real world. Uh, if you instead had a sample of you and three friends, so you had four people instead, um, Uh, then instead of using one here, you would use four. Uh, this would change from negative one to negative two. And if you calculated this with a z table, you would find that um, your probability then becomes 0 0.0228. Um, so it changes a lot. But that's basically if instead of your sample of one, just yourself, you and three friends wanted to know what, how likely it would be that the average of your four plants um, together would be less than this 2.9 feet that we used. Um, and that's how you would calculate that. It's the same deal. You can also find how what the probability of z being greater than negative 2, which would translate to the probability of you and your friends having plants that are um, bigger than 2.9 feet instead using the same properties that we discussed in last video. Um, so, well, that's it for um, central limit theorem, the z-scores and normal distribution. Um, if you want to see more um, probability and statistics videos, you can feel free to click up here. If you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click here. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, feel free to click down here. And if you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner up there that should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you learned something about the central limit theorem. <laughs>